I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Sarah Gleason, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Alberta Elementary School District. Yes. Congratulations and Thank thanks you. for joining us. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. So tell us about yourself. Tell us where you teach and what you teach. Um, I teach at Alberta Elementary School. It's a very, very small um, school in a very small district. I believe it's one of the smallest districts in Sacramento County. Um, I teach first grade and um, our school is um, very tiny like I shared. It has about a little over 200 students um, and our district only has two schools in it. So we have our elementary school and then we have our junior high school which um, ha houses um, our junior high plus a charter junior high and high school. So tell me a little bit about um, your class and your experiences. Uh, you know first grade is an interesting age because you know, the, the, some kids actually don't even go to kindergarten. That's true. And so you're dealing with a kind of a, a different audience where we've got some kids who have some exposure to school and skills and some who may not even have preschool or kindergarten. So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you deal with the, the, the wide range of what you might have? It's quite a juggling act. I think every teacher deals with that. Um, as far as our children, you, have to, you do have to get to know them and get to know their strengths and their weaknesses and um, try to individualize as much as you can by doing small groups, by doing um, individual um, time, but also having to teach the children to be independent because when I get them, um, some of them have had exposure to kindergarten, so they do have a little bit of independent skills, but um, it's, it's not too much. So that's my main goal is to teach them independence so I am able to then also move along and, and do small groups and, and try to meet them individually. So you're dealing with um, teaching the academics and still teaching the socialization? Absolutely. Behavior, I, I say, is, is probably a little bit more than academic teaching. <laughs> so um, once you get the behavior down, then you can really teach the academics. So I, I really um, try to focus on that, and we're teaching the whole child, not just the academic piece. And so um, I, I think that my goal as a teacher is to really try to raise wonderful citizens of the world. And so you're teaching manners, trying to teach them how to apologize, teaching them how to interact appropriately with one another mm -hmm. so we can live <laughs> in a kind classroom. <laughs> so so uh, you're dealing with you know, kind of a wide range, wide range of students. So how do you deal with you know, the motivating of some of the students who might need a little extra nudge compared to others? What are some, maybe some special things you do? Um, everything in my classroom is considered a privilege. So it's a privilege to have a desk. It's a privilege to have a pencil and eraser. Um, and so once students uh, get those privileges per taken away, they definitely are motivated to try to work for those. That's just a basic whole classroom one. Um, we do teamwork celebrations, um, and that's for working together as a whole class. That's a whole um, a, a whole class um, positive reinforcement and then as far as my individual ones you really need to get to know the child and get to know what motivates them and what makes them tick what they like what they don't like so um, I try to eat lunch with my children every day um, to build that relationship with them so then you are able to fully understand that um, aspect and then um, as far as individual motivators, then you can figure that out. So especially for my, my little ones who, the 1% who really do need that extra nudge, I'm able to slip in those different motivating factors. So if they like cars, they can work hard behaviorally and academically to earn um, playing time with a car after school. Or um, I've had different students earn time with me individually because all they wanted was individual attention. So um, they earn time after school with me for 10 minutes and that's extra special for them. So you talked about relationships. Yes. Relationships with the students are, are important. Absolutely. Tell me about building relationships with um, the families mm -hmm. and you know the school community, how all that's important as well. Oh, it's incredibly important. Um, we are a team. So it's not just me um, teaching the children. It is a team effort. It's the parent. It's the principal. It's the community members. So we are an active team trying to teach our children. Um, you know, Not one person is to blame for a child struggling. Um, so to have that close relationship with the families is absolutely essential. And I work in a very tiny school, so that really lends itself um, to building those relationships. We tend, I tend to um, have students who come from the same family, multiple, all their children. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm already able to build that rapport with them. Um, 
So it, it is nice to have that relationship with the parents and the families. And so how do you work with the families to kind of continue the education at home? Because um, constant communication. You, yeah, you do it at home and at school. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, constant communication. Um, so phone calls, trying to um, work together with the parents, give them ideas, give them some extra help and resources um, at home as well. So what brought you to the teaching profession? Was it something you always wanted? No, it was not. No? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> my mom was a teacher. I come from a teaching family. Um, my mom was a teacher. Her siblings are teachers. And then like me, her siblings' children became teachers. And I saw the amount of the um, sacrifices my mom had to make for her children. And to be an effective teacher, you do sacrifice a lot. Um, and so she, um, I, I saw that the effects of that as a child and I thought, I just want a basic eight to five job, like being a gymnast or a SEAL trainer or a mom, <laughs> just perfect eight to five job. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but um, as I grew older, I, all my high school jobs and my college jobs revolved around children. And um, my mom ended up, I ended up helping my, my mom with a, um, our children's program at our church. And I helped teach and lead and um, helped develop the program, but I still was determined not to be a teacher and um, I ended up going to college and studying theater. And in, the in my theater classes, um, one class I ended up taking was children's theater. And with the encouragement of my professor and my family, um, I decided to become a teacher because I realized that you could really use theater in the classroom. And so I thought, well, I can, I can be a teacher and also use my love of theater within the classroom. So how do you do that? How do you use your love of theater in the classroom? Oh, it's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we do all sorts of theatrical activities. Um, theater actually, um, there's a lot of practices that are utilized every day and it can go in any, any job, but especially in teaching. Um, the improvisation, learning to collaborate and communicate effectively, um, those are things that, that I utilize every day. But as far as specific theatrical techniques, um, we do a lot of improvisation, we do a lot of, um, of acting and miming, um, very much like charades, that gets the kids up and moving. A basic example would be a transition from the carpet to their desks. Um, most teachers would just sing a song. Well, we, um, we sing a song and we act like an animal. And that not only gets the kids up and moving and it not only allows them to have fun and for about a minute, mm -hmm. um, but it, it helps them with um, their visualization, which is a component of reading. And so um, many students struggle with that. So if they're able to visualize an animal and how that anim animal moves, and like if, uh, if it was, please act like a lion, go into your desk. That would be a beginning one. Um, so they have to think a lion has a mane, a lion has whiskers, a, how does a lion move? Um, and then we build on that throughout the year. Um, so by the end of the year, it's pretend that you are a lion going, uh, riding a skateboard through the snow down a hill. And they love it. And they get wild and crazy for about a minute, but um, it, it really does help that and it develops that, that visualization component. Um, and then we also do a play in my classroom. So we, um, we do a formal play. In the in February, and it's a patriotic play. Mm -hmm. So, so you apply those those uh, theater skills uh, in the classroom because you're talking about um, confidence, presentation, absolutely, um, uh, getting over that fear of of talking to people in front of people. Exactly, and that's huge. Um, and to feel safe and to feel comfortable um, to present and to share your knowledge, and especially with Common Core now. Um, that asks a lot of students to express how they um, came to an answer, the pro their pro thinking process. And for a lot of students, that's very scary, or they don't know how to effectively communicate that. So using the theatrical techniques, they're able to, a lot of them, it gives them a, a, a base to help communicate their academic learning as well. So what does it mean to you to be a teacher of the year? Oh, boy. Um, it's quite an honor. It was quite a surprise. Um, because I am very young, um, it it truly is is an honor um, to to be representing my school district because I work with some phenomenal teachers. So, well, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Sarah Gleason, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2016 for the Alberta Elementary School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.